Well, today's topic is um, logarithmic functions and inverse functions. So make sure that you put a title on your page of notes and put today's date. You can title it logarithmic and inverse functions. And we are going to be looking at a few different topics. Some of these we've already talked about before. One to one we've talked about. We're going to spend a little more time on inverses and finding an inverse. We're going to review a little bit of logarithmic functions and then the properties of logarithms. Okay? So let's get started. First of all, one to one functions. We've talked about this before in class already, so I'm going to go through this quickly. But the horizontal line test will let us know whether a function is specifically a one to one function. Okay? So here we have an example of a cubic. And we notice that if we were to draw a horizontal line, that it only will cross the graph at one point. So therefore, a cubic is a function, but more specifically, it's a one-to-one -one function. Now, if we look at the graph of y equals x squared, the quadratic, this is a function, but is it a one-to-one -one function? So if you notice here, then, a horizontal line drawn on the graph of a quadratic will intersect it at more than one point. So this is not a one-to-one -one function. So that means for every y value, there is more than one x value. Okay? Now this is going to be helpful in determining whether or not a function has an inverse. So let's move along. Oh, but before we move along to inverses, now your first two problems. Now this video is a little different in that I want you to do problem one and problem two. And then on the form attached to this video, you're going to submit the answer. So the question is, you must determine whether each of these is a one-to-one -one function. So number one, you're going to write yes or no, and then you'll do the same for number two. So go ahead and you can pause the video, answer those questions, and write in your response. Now, let's talk about inverse functions. Now, you recall from previous classes that an inverse function is notated by f and then it looks like it's raised to a negative power, but it's really not. It's an f inverse. This is not an exponent. So do, do remember that if I write f inverse of x, it does not mean the reciprocal of f of x. If I want the reciprocal of f of x, then I would write something like that to notate the reciprocal. Okay. Now what else do we need to know about inverse? First of all, one way to verify that two functions are inverses of each other is if we do the composite of each of those functions. So if I'm verifying f of x and g of x are inverse functions, I go f of g of x, and then I find the composite of g of f of x. And what will happen is that they are inverses of each other, then they will be an identity function. Okay? So the results will be identity. Let's look at an example. So Of 4x 
minus 12, but we can see that this function is a one-to-one -one function. So therefore, it will have an inverse. Now, we know that inverse functions are basically where you take the coordinates of the x and y values and you switch them. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to solve in terms of y. And the second step then is that we'll interchange the coordinates, the values, to the variables. So I have y equals 4x minus 12. So let us solve for x. So I'll add 12. I'll divide by 4. So I get 1 fourth y plus 3 equals x. Okay? Now I need to interchange the x and y. So then the inverse of the original function will be 1 fourth x plus 3 equals y. This is my inverse function. Now we can verify this by doing a composite. I can do the composites of both of them, and they should end up with an identical distribution. Now, if we take a look at the graph of this function, you should notice something. So here we have the f of x function, and here we have its inverse. And you should notice that with these two functions, that they are symmetrical around the line y equals x. Now, ask yourself, why does that make sense? Well, if you realize all we did here is we interchange the y and x variables. So since we interchange them, we are basically saying that they are equal. So then they will be, we can, they are symmetric about y equals x. This is a graphical way of verifying that two functions are inverses. So graphically, we can verify, algebraically, we can verify by doing composition. And numerically, we could verify by making a list of x and y ordered pairs and seeing if the inverse, if the x and y ordered pairs are just interchanged. Ah, love it, huh? Okay. Now, this is an example for you to do. This is example three. You must find the inverse of the function x squared plus 1. And then you must verify that the function you find is the inverse. Okay, so you, I'd like you to do a composition. So I would like you to do a composition of f of x, f of x, f, and its inverse of x, and then its inverse and f of x. Okay? So pause the video and give yourself some time to work on this. Last thing we want to talk about is logarithmic functions. So we have done some work with this. Here you notice we have a logarithmic function with the base of a. Now we know that logarithmic and exponential functions have a unique relationship. They are inverses of each other. So here is the exponential function written as the inverse of log base a of x. Okay? Now, the domain and range. Let's talk about this. We know that inverses are when you interchange the x and y variables. Well, what happens with the domain and range? Well, y of log base a of x. Log of x is one of those functions we should be able to make a sketch of the parent function. So let's say this is my log of a of x. Now, we know the domain of this is from 0 to infinity, and the range is negative infinity to infinity. Now, if I were to make a quick sketch of um, a to the x, we know that exponential functions have a key locator point at 0, 1, and here's my sketch. Well, check out the domain of this function. Now, remember, we interchanged the x and y, so what was the range of log base a to the x should be the domain of its inverse. Is that true? Yes, the domain is negative infinity to infinity. And what is the range of this function should be the domain of its inverse. Is it true that the range is zero to infinity? Voila, it is. So you can see we can also look at it that way, verify it there. If I were to sketch now on the same graph, the logarithm graph, you notice that they are symmetric about y equals x. Could I fold across this line? And I would have a match. You sure would, Clyder. Let's continue. Now here are some of the properties of exponential functions and logarithms. If you would like to look at more examples, please refer to section 1.5 in your book. But I think you remember that if we have a base A raised to the logarithm of the same base, then they undo each other, the inverses, the logarithm and exponential are inverses, so we end up with the identity, okay? Same here, remember natural log is base B. We don't 
don't write it every time because that is something that we can assume. So notice it's an exponential function and then it's raised to its inverse. So they are inverses, they undo each other, so we are left to simplify this x. Okay? Um, also notice in the second example, natural log t e will equal x. Oh, sorry, there, there we go. Now why is that true? Because if I take the base and raise it to the exponent, it is e to the x. So you'll notice that these are inverses, the base e, the quantity of base e will undo each other. Now, logarithm. You remember these rules? Oh yeah, you do. Logarithm with the base a of a product of a quantity is equal to its sum of those terms in the quantity. The quotient rule, if you divide a quantity with base a, it's equal to its difference. In the power rule, we've been doing some problems here. Where you're raised to a power y, we've talked already that the product rule allows us to rewrite it as y times log of theta. Remember, look at section 1, 5 of you. Change of base formula. Again, we've, we've talked about this thing too, so it's just a little bit of review. But if I have a logarithm base a to the x, and I can't graph that, but I, if I need to change it to log base 10, well, here you can see, now we're in, some of you are more comfortable rewriting the logarithm. So the base is a, so it would be log a, and then in the numerator would go log x. So we could put that into our calculator. Now remember, it's interchangeable with natural log. I could write natural log in here, raise to the next, with the numerator being natural log of x. So then how would you graph log base 3 to the x in your calculator? The base is the issue, so we need to change the base. So our change of base rule says then, in the denominator, we'll have log 3, and that's base 10. The numerator will be log x. So now I can put that in the calculator and graph it. But remember, we can always use natural log interchangeably, because our calculator does graph from base to base. Your last problem to do, and this is kind of a review problem, is an exponential growth. So I would like you to solve this problem, and then you'll submit the answer in the form. We'll see you in class tomorrow.